Okay, fellas, this is for the WBO Featherweight Championship. Went over the rules in the dressing room. Check these trunks, these are a little bit low. Check these trunks, these are good. Let's have a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times and obey my commands. Touch them up, bang at the belt. Here we go. Both undefeated. Valdez putting his title on the line. He owns the second highest knockout percentage among modern era featherweight titles active or retired. Round number one. Savania has been on the floor. He might be again tonight. Savania to me just looks so physically strong. Just threw a look at Valdez and kind of moved him back a little bit. I actually think he's good to play Valdez. Looks at the season, right? Greg, you really look at facts. Savania is actually a small guy. Tim turned pro 108. Most fights at 122, while Valdez turned pro 132. And he's fought most of his career at Featherweight. By the way, not an uncommon path of growth with what we've seen with Filipino fighters. I mean, of course, we know that better than anyone. For one of the greatest. Right. This is a fight where I think size will matter or can matter as far as being a bigger guy because both guys like to impose themselves, I said it earlier, physically. And when you want to do that, the bigger guy can have an edge. Valdez is just focused right now on landing that, that jab and controlling Savannah at distance. Big hand to the body from Oscar. Both guys have scar tissue above those eyes. Savania, a little bit more. Crowd guy is showing a little bit more dimension. Go inside, go outside, can use his legs. For the most part, Savania wants to come in that front door. More body work from Valdez. Right now, one dimension in Zavania versus multi dimensions in Valdez. Multi dimensions usually win. Sometimes Valdez come out <laughs> wide with those shots. I just saw Savania land a quick left hook in the inside of that. I believe it was a right, a right hand, overhand right by Valdez. Valdez loves to loop that right hand. He throws it like a baseball sometimes. Savania found a home for that big right back, right? There's a wide sweeping right hand that missed its target to the body moments ago. In the fighter meeting, Valdez said that he learned a lot from his last half time out. That was an entertaining fight against Mariaga. Yes, very entertaining fight. Said he's gonna be patient with him. So Teddy, Timmy, and Bernardo here ringside in Tucson. Round number two of our featherweight title fight. Oscar Valdez. 50 punches in that first round. His percentage landed not as high as we typically see out of the champ. But sustained work. You know, with all the great, and I mean great history and tradition of Mexican fighters, Valdez, the only Mexican fighter ever to be involved in two Olympics, representing Mexico, 2008, 2012 games. He was only 17 years old in those 2008. There's the versatility that I think has given Valdez the upper hand right here. He's able to go in, go out, go to the side. For the most part, Savania, one-dimensional inside, coming forward straight ahead. Valdez better be cautious. He's throwing combinations and he's getting clipped. He's trying to get time by Sevilla. Savania able to Savania, excuse me. land that right hand in between the punches of Valdez. Savania has a bad habit. Watch, he wastes a lot of movement. He's moving his head from too far away. When he moves that head from too far away, he's not Look, look at it. See that head movement too far away. Unnecessary, and it could be timed. With a hard jab. Yes, it can. And with a right hand. Behind the jab, Timmy, like you. You're absolutely right. Right in the pocket there. There's a left hand land from Valdez. 
there. And again, watch that head movement of Savania from too far away. When he starts moving that head too far away, out of position, out of range, good spot for Valdez to step in, time him a little, touch him up a little. <laughs> There's that wide sweeping right again from Oscar. So Savannah's gonna be there. And that left hook is there. Comes back with a sweeping left hand. Sometimes Savannah stands there a little bit too long. And he gets hit with the third shot. And he the fourth shot. No, you're right, Tom. But the main thing Savannah does he continues to be predictable. Coming in from movement too far away. <coughs> the same speed, the same direction, straight ahead. Good final minute here of round number two from the undefeated titleist, Oscar Valdez Jr. <laughs> Championship featherweight. Uh, 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 to uh, and he's staying uh, right there. For now. For now. You mentioned something about more dimensions from Valdez and that amateur pedigree. Well, Savannah only had two amateur fights. That's, that's why you're able to see the, the movement and the creativity from Valdez. More dimensions. So Valdez had 204 average of fights. Almost not fair. Good exchange right in the middle of the ring between these two. Bernardo Asuna does such a great job listening into both corners, making his way around ringside. Bernie, what can you tell us? Well, in Genesis Ravania's corner, they want body work. But in the red corner of Oscar Valdez, Manny Robles said, he's coming right at you. No head movement. Use that uppercut and set up that left hook. Right hand that tried to get around the guard from Oscar. Instructions there that will pass on to us. Absolutely right. You got a guy coming right at you. That's him coming in. And that's exactly what Bell does is do. Here are the champ here in Tucson. They love their hometown guy. Oscar's boxing well from the outside right now. He just popped with a straight right hand and a left hand right after. Savania seems like he's, he can't find his rhythm right now. Can't find Oscar. Most of Savania's fights have been in the Philippines. This is his first fight in the U.S. An awfully unhospital way. Not a lot of hospitality to invite a fighter into the country. For his first fight, putting him in with a guy like Valdez. And not only that, but his lead trainer, Mark Will Milligan, had visa issues, so he couldn't make the trip. Now, he does have an experienced corner, and he has a side by side with him back in Japan. But when a guy's been with you every step of the way, Timmy, like the guy to your yes. right, yes. to all of a sudden find out late in the process, lead dog's not going to be barking, that changes things. It changes things because. You know, you believe in that man that's in that corner giving you instructions. I'm not sure what, the, what kind of experience he has with, with, the, with the guy that's working his corner right now. And for me, Teddy knows my tendencies. He knows what I'm all about. And you need to know that. You know, when you're a fighter, you, when you want to pump him up and get him, get him going. Now, Yuki Kashimi is who traveled over to be the chief second now. The Cervantes. Time! Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter these families. You can donate today by going to redcross.org slash ESPN. And I want to add this to that comment, because earlier tonight we saw the great champion, Gilberto Ramirez, who was marked at 36-0. He dedicated tonight's title defense to those back in Mexico City. And Canelo Alvarez is there in person, helping, lending his help, on the ground, helping with food, with water, 
hands-on is Canelo Alvarez today in Mexico City. Well done. Behavior of a champion. Yes. That's right, Teddy. Behavior of a human being. And we are seeing an emerging, blossoming breakthrough star here in Oscar Valdez, a champion at 26 years old. Stop! Stop, stop. Don't pull on the head, okay? Let's go. Grew up here in this town, then went to Mexico for his teen years, fought here about two and a half years ago, and he promised the fans then, I'm gonna win a belt, and I'm gonna come back, and I will have a world title fight in Tucson. This is that night. What is one dimension, aggressive dimension, physical dimension that Savannah brings? Not enough, when the other guy has three dimensions. And Valdez is showing all those dimensions. Body, outside, head, movement. Straight right hand, left hooks, control and range. Good work that time by Genesis Servani. Servani is using his legs one leg going forward. Valdez uses his legs a lot of ways. You'll see it right now. I'll tell you, when Oscar digs in with that left-handed body, he just opens up with everything he can offer. Right? Like I said earlier, both these guys throw punches with bad intentions. Another body shot, then he comes with a right hand. Valdez doesn't throw any take-it-easy punches. Everything he throws to do that. Okay, okay, continue, continue. He got caught moving away with the right hand with his hands down. Very incredulous to West Melton even asking the question, are you okay? You're moving away. You know, he's been showing the dimensions that we're talking about. What is it? Not to your advantage to have that dimension. When you move off to the side with your hands down, where the opponent can catch you on the way out. He got caught on the way out. And he comes in with a right hand. Look at the challenger on the attack. Oscar Valdez in trouble here at the end of the round. What a round for Genesis Cervania. Tranquilo, tranquilo, tranquilo. Eh? Vivo, vivo, vivo. Deme el mapito. Dale va el agua. Mira, es, es exceso de confianza, eh, tranquilo, es exceso de confianza, ¿ok? No hay que hacer exceso de confianza. Cuando te fuiste a la primera caída, cruzaste los pies. Matado, ¿ok? Tranquilito, tranquilito, vivito. Hey. I'm you got overconfident, you got hey, caught, you crossed the board. Game was done late, but here's the knockdown that started things for Genesis. Yeah, you you got to move to the right side, right. but when you move to the side, you got to do with your hands up, and you got to make sure you're not in range. He's in range, he moved out, he got caught with the right hand. Now he gets wobbled to get here after getting up. Again, same thing, going out with his left hand down. Got caught with the right hand, got hurt. It's great to move out. It's great to move to the side, but you gotta do it the right way. He did it the wrong way, he gave a free shot to Zavania. There's a little unexpected drama in round number four as the undefeated title challenger, Genesis Zavania, gets him hurt in the fourth round, wobbles him late. Let's check in with what they're saying in Valdez's corner with Bernardo. They told him, you got overconfident. You walked away with your hands down and you crossed your feet. That's when he connected and that's what happened. Just stay alert. That was something that I saw in my other fight. And I said during the telecast that he pulls away with his hands down, comes out too fat. And you show him how to come out, you know, the right way. And a lot of fighters do that, but they get away with it until they don't get away with it. When you get a guy to follow you with the punch. Exactly. And Teddy, to your point earlier, everything that Timmy just described, things that you have described, that's what makes for an entertaining fight here. This is what makes for a good TV fight at a championship level. Even There's some up. flaws. Oh, yeah. Even things up real quick. Because the champion guy has a, a setup. 
Anymore. There was a short right hand on the inside from the Filipino title challenger there that scored again. Well, it looks like Savania is the stronger man right now. Valdez is hitting him with everything and not hurting him, but Savania is hitting Valdez and he's hurting him. Right hand that split the guard from Valdez. that the old champ hey, used to go, take no. part in. Teddy, you promised action. They are delivering and over-delivering action. Round number six, Valdez and Cervania. He promised action. He promised physicality. He promised punches with bad intention. So far, all delivered. Folks, when you see a scorecard that goes back to back, with opposite 10-8 rounds, you're loving life as a fight fan. Valdez just got his confidence back. He needed that knockdown. You know, getting dropped in the, for the first time in his career. He needed a knockdown. Now he's got his energy back. Now he's back in, in control. Traveled halfway around the world with his lead trainer unable to make the trip because of these issues. Came up tough. To emerge as a contender at 126 pounds, and then comes to Valdez's home turf and drops him. Valdez roars back. You know how you watch different fighters, where some of them throw short punches to set up hard punches. Bro, Valdez never went into that classroom. He throws hard punches to land hard punches. <laughs> Heavy-handed young man. Even his jab. Look at that jab. Hard. That's your hand scores from Genesis. Can't get around that guard. Took again. Look that hard jab. Look that hard jab does, Joe. And that hard jab comes from Valdez. It sends a signal to Savanio. Yeah, you want to be aggressive, but think twice before you're too aggressive. It makes you think a little bit before you come forward where you normally might be coming forward right away. And sometimes you have a chance to and just keep you there for the right hand. Yeah, they set the table where you can eat with that next one. I've been hit with jabs that felt like right hands. Right 
fought everybody who was the best time. Yeah. Valdez put himself in a bad situation right here trying to get away. Hit for the shot. I'll tell you where the danger zone is for Valdez. The sight pulling out. We saw that already. But when you're rolling up on everything hard, you leave a little hole sometimes. Japan. Let's look at the power punches in the last round. Nine. Sylvania a little more effective down the stretch, especially in the final 15 seconds. Oscar's father stepped up to the ring and said, I know you want to put on a show for the home crowd, but you need to be intelligent. Then Manny Robles stepped in and said, look, you need to be smart. You need to control the fight. And don't let him steal rounds like you did in that kind of combination. Oscar went with a body shot there, and doing so then opened up again as Genesis tried to place the right hand. He's looking for a home for that right uppercut. Oscar sometimes lean in when he throws a hook to the body, or he throws his right hand and lean in. And he's just off the mark. But I see it landing possibly later in the fight when Oscar kind of fades and settles down a little bit. Absolutely right. I'll tell you another thing. But now he's losing himself a valve exposed. Again, load up on any type that's all he knows. When you load up and you miss like that, guess what? Your body follows the punch. And you fall in a little bit. And when you fall in a little bit, well, you can be available for a counter. What do you think about this, coach? Three months of training camp. Eight weeks to norm. And he says he has to know, not physically, but mentally, that he said absolutely everything, says Oscar. That he's prepared for every possible situation. I've been there before. I used to do the same thing. And then as I got older and matured as a fighter and had, you know, got, got more experience, I went down to eight, eight, you know, eight weeks and of you training. And sh you shared that advice with him this year, too. You know? So it still shows that Oscar's still developing mentally, physically, as a fighter, as a, as a world champion, as a young world champion. You know, to have confidence in self and his ability. Not much landed there. Backed him up. But that left hand is on the glove of Savannah. That's where you gotta trust yourself when that comes with experience. Because a fighter only knows one thing, and he's gonna put those right hands again. There's a big right hand again from Genesis. Left hand now when he steps back, he's getting caught. A fighter knows one thing, I work, I work, I work. That's where my confidence comes from. But that's where a trainer has to say, you worked enough, you worked too much, and it can be detrimental. Support as the Oscar chant starts up again. The twists and turns of a championship fight, and we're only at the end of round seven. How do you blow around again? Second down, second Stop down. Drop your left hand. Second down, let's you go. You fall out in front of the guy, and the guy lands. And the guy being the challenger, and he comes back, and he's got a little smile, and he's saying, Thank you, champion. You gave me another round. <laughs> Genesis Savania has earned that smile. He loves being aggressive. And he understands this golden opportunity that's in front of him. Savania scored the knockdown in round four. Then he was put down in round five. That is why you see the dueling 10 8 rounds in the middle of Teddy Atlas's scorecard. You saw Valdez land a four punch combination. Switch it up. Every shot looked. Not that hard, but it's just quick. He needs to go a little, little bit more of that. Again, you see the same thing. The good, the bag, and the other. The good and the bad. Valdez, the good. All bad attention. All power shots. The bad sometimes puts him out of position. And when he puts him out of position, 
that can happen. Your opponent can be right there to catch him. And he's waiting on him to pull back. Savannah is. Waiting on Valdez to pull out of that combination so he can step forward and hit him with the straight shots. Like that. Valdez is a bad habit in pulling out with his hands down. Before any more fireworks go off, let me get out a real quick happy birthday to my nephew, Ray Matlis, 13 years old today. Happy birthday. Another combination that received return fire from Cervani. One thing that Savanya said in the fighter meeting was is that Valdez gets hit later in the fight. He feels that should be his best opportunity to land shots on Valdez is later in the fight. And what Valdez is doing right now, using his legs to make sure he don't get hit, keeping Savanya a little off balance. And he's doing a pretty good job of keeping him off balance. You got a strong guy. Both guys are strong. You got a strong guy in Zavania. How do you neutralize that? Move to the side, keep more balance. Don't let him be set to use that strength. That's what he's doing right now. Zavania right now is waiting on his opportunity. He's waiting on Valdez to do the work for him. Pull back, Valdez. Pull the two off. Stop, stop. Back up, back up. He might have blown around waiting. Challenger who doesn't know how to lose. Undefeated Genesis Sergano. All punches you see there in the last round. You young fighters out there, that's why you use a jab to set the shots up. You step in, you don't reach it. You know, in between rounds, I saw Valdez manager come over to the corner. A little bit worried. Not sure what he said to, to the coaches in the corner, but maybe it's just a urgency for Valdez to step up and do what he needs to do to get this guy out of here or, or to win this fight. A little concerned. You have to be careful when you think you're going out the side door. You better make sure you're really going out the side door. Okay, you went straight back. And got caught. Got caught. You're going out the side door, guys. You gotta make sure that you get outside that shoulder where you're safe. You're still inside that shoulder, but you can get caught on the way out. And I'll tell you the roar of this crowd that we were hearing in that fifth round when they felt their guy, their champ, had turned it and had it in the danger zone to close it, scored the knockdown, and was rallying. It's like a wet blanket has been thrown over with some of these moments of success of opportunity from Cervania. Bernardo, what can you tell us? In Cervania's corner, they just want him to keep pressuring. They want him to work the body and just always be in Oscar Valdez's face. And what else would they want? What else would they want? What to do? Reaction from the body shot with the left hand. That was a vicious body shot by Valdez just a second ago. It's not like you're going to tell Zermani, you know what, I want you to act like you're going to get out. Dug into the body again with the left hand. You know, Savannah is so predictable. And in the sense of that, I, I think Valdez is at times too. And Savannah is taking, taking advantage of opportunities. I think, it's a, you know, Savannah is waiting on Valdez to pull out so he can have opportunity to hit him. He truly is. And if you wait on one thing to me and it doesn't come, you fall behind the eight ball. Savannah has fallen behind the eight ball a little bit here, the last couple rounds. Well I, think that, this round. well, I think that's the only opportunity he knows he has. He can't outbox. Valdez. No, no, but by waiting on one shot to catch him on the way out, that doesn't come. He's losing the opportunity to just come forward behind the gym. He 
emerging light heavyweight star, a title eliminator against Enrico Colvin. That is all November 11th, 10.30 Eastern start on November 11th, top-ranked boxing on ESPN. I love these loaded cars with action throughout. We saw Conlon earlier showed you that highlight. A great title fight with super middleweights as Gilberto Ramirez had a unanimous decision against Jesse Hart. And here they have traded knockdowns for the WBO featherweight title. You know, I want to take a moment. I only think it's right. We celebrated the retirement a little while ago of a great fighter, Andre Ward, and rightfully so. A couple months ago, the guy sitting right in between us, Joe, pretty yes. darn great fighter right here. We talked about Andre Ward being a great winner. We could talk about Tim Bradley being a great winner. We talked about Andre Ward having nothing but class. We could talk about Tim Bradley, nothing but class. So I'd just like to say congratulations on your retirement, Jack. I appreciate that. The division world champion. I'm thrilled to be sitting with you for so many of these recent great fights. Back up, back up. And that was very right there. You know, he landed that left hook, Valdez, but then he pulled out with his hands down. And the left hook wins by his chin. Right, Teddy. So he was waiting a little bit too long. He's getting beat to the punt, beat to the mark. He's blowing rounds doing this. And like I said, his only opportunity is when Valdez make the mistake in that habit that he has and pull him straight back. That's a great opportunity. And, and he has taken advantage of that it, opportunity. It is a great opportunity, Teddy, but I'll argue with you with one thing. He has an opportunity to just do it the way that he does it. Come forward behind the jab and just get inside, get in the trenches. He's not doing that the last couple rounds. He's looking for the one shot, and that has not been serving him. Well, it looks like to me that Valdez is not cooperating. He's moving, using his legs, finding angles. And in a fight like this, where Valdez seemingly controls the early goings, then we have the trading of knockdowns in four and five and some of the bigger rallies in the sixth. Valdez can box his way to gathering points and losses elsewhere. So championship rounds have arrived. Valdez, and that gets the attention of his own fans. Now, you made the point the last round, Timmy, and to your point, you're right, that I'm saying that Savannah should just be doing the what got him into the dead. Not looking for the one shot, if it stands there. But instead of falling behind, as he has the last several rounds, looking for the one shot, press behind the jab, get in, and you said, well, Valdez is not cooperating. Gotcha. But it doesn't matter. You still have to do that and take that tack. Take that, take that attitude. And then if he doesn't let you get there, fine. But you lose with what brought you here. You lose with the best of yourself. Right now, he's not losing with the best of himself. When he came out the gate shoot, firing that jab. He must have heard you. And working his combinations after. And that's what he should be doing. You're going to lose. The guy's going to outbox you. He's not going to cooperate with you. Make him do that. But don't stand there looking for one shot. They may not be there. Exactly. Come in there. Come with what got you here. Come behind that jab. Come with all barrels firing. If he outboxes you, so be it. But at least you know that you brought what you needed to bring. And he's not doing that right now. He was there in round four, six, seven, but it hasn't been there the last three rounds. Watch your heads. Watch your heads in there. Watch your heads. Stop. Back up. Come up short on that right hand behind the draft, Coach Genesis. 
Win or lose after this fight, the connections of Valdez need to go back to the drawing back board, go back to the gym, and correct that habit of going out or to the side with your hands down, exposed. Oh, such a defensive flaw in cost him tonight. And then everything just being just a little too wide at times. Yes. And if you don't correct that, somewhere down the road you'll pay a price. A little head press right there. It is. Left hand to the body from Oscar. That body shot right there seemed to hurt. It's a thing you feel me. It's good. As we will listen in before the 12th and final round. Just give me one more round. You're going to take risks, but in an intelligent fashion. Are you all right? Hey. Vale aire, échale Well, here we go. We'll play with the mouthpiece. 106-101, says Teddy. They traded the knockdowns in the middle, but then those missed opportunities with Cervantes just looking for that one big shot as Valdez boxes his way to a lead on Teddy's scorecard. The champ returning home here to Tucson, looking to defend things, and the beginning of this round tells us we may be in store for a little something different here in this final round. Welcome final round. As he lets loose, Genesis says, come on, bring a little more of the net, my friend. Stalking and a right hand does land there. Again, pull it out. Better correct that. Pull it out straight and front. Good exchange. Don't go anywhere, you guys. <laughs> well, this is going to be go sensational nowhere. stuff down the stretch. Right they, don't, hand. they don't know anything, these guys, except fighting. Even if they're ahead, they don't care. About their head, so what? I'm still gonna go and get him. That's why I like these baby. wears his heart on the sleeve. You're a head kid, box, move around. Now I'm gonna go get him. So then he's very game. Still, he's still in this fight. He's still seconds left. And again, everything in a big shot. Valdez, everything he rolls up on. And that can leave an opening. Such risk reward in the center of the ring from the champion. Lady is running on fumes right now. <laughs> Nothing but heart. Nothing but heart is pushing in for him. Seconds remain here with the title on the line. You were wondering if Sabani is running on fumes? Just look at that last close inside, that last moment inside. He got in close, he didn't punch. He needs to rest. Oscar comes forward. Crowd rising. As they're looking for their hometown champ to retain things here in Tucson. Oh, that's good stuff. How about it? Valdez, Surveying. They trade it back down and they take it.
to the limit. The homecoming. And in the arms of Manny as trainer. We will hear from the judges. Judge O'Connell scores it 116 to 110. Judge Martinez, 119 to 111. And Judge Taylor scores it 117 to 109. For the winner, by way of unanimous decision, and still WBO featherweight champion of the world, Puro Nogales, senores, Oscar. Valdez does it here at home. He promised him he'd return with the belt. And he will now meet up with family and friends living here in Tucson to celebrate.